Hey everyone. Last week I did a really quick video about the Azure AD rename to Microsoft Entra ID. And there was a lot of reaction, some very positive, some very negative. And normally I avoid opinion type videos or what I think or others think reactions. However, what I saw this time was a lot of negative reactions were based on misunderstandings of two key things. And so I thought maybe if I just looked at those two key things, it may help at least understand and maybe reset and diffuse some of those very negative reactions. Now, I'm not gonna say calm down. Many years of marriage have taught me that doesn't work, but maybe if we just understand it, it may help. Now, if you look at some of my old Azure AD videos, funnily enough, Azure AD is the only naming I've ever been critical of. I have said in many of my Azure AD videos, I do not like the name. And I don't like the name because it was inaccurate. It is not representative of what the feature actually is. And so I thought it would be useful to look at that. Now we'll start with the AD bit of the name because that's the oldest bit. Now remember, Active Directory, well, Active Directory, AD, is actually a Windows server set of roles. And there were multiples of these. Now often when we say AD, what we actually mean is Active Directory DS, the, the domain services. Now those domain services were built on an X500 type hierarchy of organizational units, so it wasn't flat at all. We had LDAP APIs to interact with objects. We spoke things like NTLM, we spoke Kerberos, and we had these domain controllers that provided the actual services to make these things work. But there were a whole bunch of other things. There was things like certificate services, so Active Directory certificate services. There was Active Directory Federation services, so I could have SAML, WS Fed, um, federations with other identity providers. There was Active Directory rights management services, Active Directory um, LDS. We had the lightweight directory services. So there were a whole bunch of roles that came under this Active Directory umbrella. And then we could think, well, okay, that's what was on-premises. And Active Directory had a really strong, positive brand. And then we had Microsoft. Well, they started to have a whole bunch of cloud services. There was the business productivity, BPOS. There was, I guess it was Exchange Online kicked off some of these things. And obviously that evolved into a much bigger Microsoft 365 eventually offering. Obviously they had services like Azure, then there was Dynamics 365. There's a whole set of these types of services. But the key point is, when we start to think of the cloud and even beyond what Microsoft were doing, it needed to speak cloud protocols. So we think about things like, well, it has to speak OAuth 2, it has to speak OpenID Connect. Sure, it speaks SAML. And it had its own REST API. Initially, it was specific to Azure Active Directory, so I could have this RESTful endpoint to interact with the objects. Now it's evolved to Microsoft Graph. But the whole point is they had this entirely new service, this brand new identity provider that spoke cloud. The key point here Azure AD was never built on Active Directory domain services. So this AD part is not Active Directory domain services in the cloud at all. There were no domain controllers here. It doesn't speak NTLM, it doesn't speak LDAP. Po case in point, they've only, after 10 years, added a very limited Kerberos ability for some use cases around SMB because it wasn't natively part of the solution. 
Now, sure, they may have took some learnings from creating these directory services for some of the underlying hidden bits deep, deep down, maybe like the core store hooks into some of that, but it is not Active Directory domain services in the cloud at all. If you looked at my Azure AD resiliency video, I talk about some of the components that make Azure AD, and we will see in no way is it Active Directory domain services in the cloud. And so when we think about that AD part of the name, I think we have a, a sad face, it's wrong. It is not accurate at all for what it actually is, and it caused confusion because people would think, and they'd be like, oh, okay, well, can I turn this off because I'm running Azure AD? No, they're completely different. Azure AD is flat. Even administrative units, it's still flat and I'm adding objects to it. There is no hierarchy in structure. It's not speaking these things. It's a completely different service. Okay, so now let's look at the Azure part of that name. Well, again, Azure is a very specific service. If I think of my Azure service, Azure, I can host things like my infrastructure as a service, my platform as a service, we have all our databases, our AI, our internet of things, huge sets of services are available in there. And the way we use it, the way we create these, is we deploy things into our subscription. Everything deploys in a subscription. Azure AD does not live in a subscription at all. The only relationship between Azure AD and an Azure subscription, I did a separate video on this, is when I create a subscription, I actually configure it to trust a specific, what is now a Microsoft Entra tenant, what was an Azure AD tenant, for the security principles that then can be given roles for the role-based access control to manage who can access what components. Azure is powered by a whole bunch of resource providers. They define the services. There is no Azure AD re resource provider. If you go and look, the things that have Azure AD in the name is either B2C, which is a completely separate thing that I deploy in a subscription, or it's Azure AD domain services, which is when I need this functionality in Azure, and to make it work, it has to deploy domain controllers into my VNet in a managed manner, and that's the only way it can do NTLM and the Kerberos and the LDAP. Again, proving, Azure AD is not this. If I want this in Azure, I have to deploy a whole separate service that deploys domain controllers that does a one-way sync from Azure AD to get the security principles into it and the secrets to make that work. There is no Azure AD resource provider. So it is not an Azure service in any way. So this Azure part of the name is also frowny face. It is not accurate. Azure AD is not an Azure service. Now you might look at all these sad faces then and say, well, why was it ever called Azure AD? I don't know. I could hazard a guess that if I think about, well, Microsoft has this new identity solution that speaks cloud that they wanted the public to understand was Microsoft's cloud identity service. And if I'm Microsoft, I have a very strong brand in AD that is associated with a quality directory service, users, groups, and sure, that's really the only similarity. Yes, I can have users, groups, devices in this as well. Hey, I should put AD in the name. And then people understand Azure means cloud, so I'll stick Azure in the name as well. So I get Azure AD. And I think that's how we got here. Completely inaccurate. Neither part of it is correct, but it maybe got across as it started out the idea that it's Microsoft's cloud identity solution. So here we are. They've renamed it. And again, hopefully you're, I know I'm English, which normally means we're some sort of villain and you shouldn't trust us. But I think I was always very transparent. I didn't like the Azure AD name. Again, if you look back videos from years past, 
It's the only thing I've ever been critical of. I don't like the name. It's inaccurate of what it is. So I, I actually like the, the Entra name. If I think of Entra, I think of Entra, if I'm gonna try and associate with anything, as this idea that uh, it's, it's an entrance. It's opening up. And what it's opening up to is if you think about today, well, I've got all these different cloud services and maybe not even cloud services. Hey, maybe I've even got on-premise types things that we've seen with things like the app proxy, also with the new uh, security service edge things they've just announced for Entra. Hey, it's gonna expose this for everything. So it, it's opening up because identity is the new perimeter. It is the new security perimeter, not networking. It's all about identity. And if I think about an entrance, a door, there's two aspects to what is a door. Yes, a door obviously is opening up to the things inside. In this case, it's opening up to all of those different cloud services, those applications, no matter where they are, through this single portal, through this single experience, through this single identity for the user. So I can absolutely get things like, hey, uh, I can get single sign-on, great. Uh, I can get this single experience that I can access everything. I can have single portals, my apps, uh, apps for different platforms. For the user, it's a completely seamless, fantastic experience. So sure, now, it's an entrance to, to everything. But also, if you think about your door, well, there are locks on your door. So my door is also a protection. It's that single protection point that I focus on that protects everything else. So it's gonna protect everything I have behind this. And when we think about protection, we can think about the Microsoft entry, things like, well, obviously there's conditional access, there's MFA, there's password lists, there's identity protection solutions, um, there's lifecycle workflows to manage, there's external IDs, there's verified ID, there's network edge, there's privilege identity management. I mean, the list goes on. But all of those apply in the same manner, no matter what I'm doing. So, Entra as a name, I like it. Uh, I'll be transparent on that one. I, I think it's, it is the doorway, the entrance to everything. And it's that double meaning of, hey, it's gonna allow me to see everything. Fantastic, but my door also has protections. So those same protections will apply to everything. Everything I have, I mean, again, this, this list is huge of the features we're gonna get with this. I think it's very applicable. And, I like it. And you'll see the Azure AD portal functionality is now in the Entra portal, which is very logical. And I get it. Uh, a name change is always gonna be a point of contention. It, it always is. There's people that like it, there's people that don't like it. So why are people upset? And the two things I've seen is, well, one is that it's gonna be a huge amount of work. And the work is often, I'm using PowerShell, I'm using the Azure AD module. They've renamed Azure AD, so they're gonna rename the PowerShell module. Good news, they're not. Bad news, and I did a video on this yesterday, they're not because the Azure AD PowerShell module has been on a deprecation path for a really long time. You need to move to the Management Graph module. So Microsoft Entra rename has nothing to do with that. For a very long time, there's a new authentication endpoint and there is a new Microsoft Graph RESTful endpoint for interactions. The Azure AD module talks to really the old authentication endpoint. It talks to the old Azure AD REST API. They've all been de deprecated. I need to move to the new V2 endpoint. I need to move to the new Microsoft Graph for interactions. That's what the, the Microsoft Graph PowerShell module does. So nothing to do with the rename at all, but this module has been on deprecation path for a really long time. So that's nothing to do with the rename, you need to get off of that because it's being deprecated for completely separate reasons. There is a, a completely new technology. And then people are upset about the rename because, well, it made sense. Hey, the Azure version of Active Directory is now called something different from the on-prem version of Active Directory. 
Well, hopefully I've demonstrated it was never accurate. And the fact that you're upset about it goes to show it caused a lot of confusion. This was never Active Directory domain services in Azure. It caused confusion for people. People were like, well, can I turn off my domain controllers then because I'm running Azure AD? Nope, they're completely different. It caused confusion that people said, well, do I have to have an Azure subscription to use Azure AD? Nope, because it's nothing to do with Azure, it's nothing to do with subscriptions. So if you did misunderstand it, I personally would rather have a misunderstanding cleared up and I think the rename will stop future people being confused. Now, if you're upset because you don't like the name, I mean, that's a case of personal opinion. Uh, some people like a color, some people don't like a color. Some people like a food, some people don't like a food, some people like a name, some people don't like a name. There's, I think, much, much better things to spend energy on than worrying about a name of something and if your personal opinion is positive or negative. Again, I was vocal that I didn't like the Azure AD name, but I didn't let it consume my life. It was like, oh, I don't think it makes sense. It's, it's not technically accurate, but oh well, it is what it is. What we focus on is the functionality. There's been no change in functionality because of the rename, and all they're doing is adding new capabilities to what is Microsoft Entra. And I think that's the thing to focus on. That's my two cents. So in this case, I would say keep calm and carry on. I hope that helped. Till next video, take care.